interesting direction. Um, then we have two more talks about extending my net into more directions. Um, and then we'll have the opportunity to discuss uh, about basically all three talks. Um, so without further ado, um, it's yours. Okay, thank you for the introduction. So, uh, yeah, as you already said, I want to uh, extend uh, INET in one direction, and the uh, direction actually is parallelism. So, uh, what we uh, looked at was how uh, we can make INET, at least in uh, parts, uh, fit for uh, parallel and distributed execution. So uh, I guess uh, all of you already heard about parallel execution, uh, parallel discrete event simulation. And uh, yeah, you know that it makes your simulation faster if you can use it. And uh, yeah, it already has, uh, there was a lot of research on that topic and also it's included in Omnet and so on. So, so parallel execution has really been there for a long time. But actually when you look uh, and into the models and when you talk to, to modelers, uh, most of them or, or many of them are still executing their models sequentially. And uh, yeah, the reason for this is that simply most of the models are not capable of, of parallel simulation yet. And so uh, yeah, we had a look at one uh, model suite that is uh, quite popular, I think, the, the INET model suite. And uh, yeah, so looked uh, how, uh, what, what are the issues here and how can we make this run in parallel. Uh, yeah, so what we, what we kind of did, uh, or what, what I want to, to tell you today is, uh, yeah, first uh, the, the analysis. So, so what, what, uh, yeah, what were the, the issues that we found in the INET suite? Uh, yeah, then how we, we solve it and uh, also have some, some yeah, rough performance uh, evaluation of a case study where we then see that we actually can get speed up uh, if we apply that. So there was already in 2003 a paper from uh, Sikha Cioglu and, and uh, Andras Schwager and uh, I think some third author was there. Uh, where they introduced uh, parallel simulation format. And uh, in this paper, they also introduced uh, the, uh, yeah, the requirements that uh, a model has to fulfill such that you can run it in, in parallel in, uh, in Omnet. And uh, yeah, there were uh, five requirements. So you are not allowed to use global variables. So when you, of course, when you partition your model, you, you have different uh, parts of the model being executed on different machines and of course you don't have this uh, some kind of shared memory where you can just put your variable, your global variable in where everybody could access it. And you can't uh, directly execute methods on different uh, LPs so you cannot, yeah, of course you cannot execute a method on a different uh, computer. Um, uh, there are limitations in direct sending, so you cannot use this, this direct send uh, in, in some circumstances. Uh, what is not supported is dynamically changing the topology of your uh, model. And what you uh, must have is uh, yeah, some kind of look ahead, uh, so, so you must have some kind of link delays between the, the logical processes such that uh, yeah, you have a look ahead where the parallelization can uh, come from. And actually when we looked into INET, uh, yeah, we, we uh, primarily had problems with, with uh, those two parts here. And actually the interesting thing was that, at least for the, for the wired parts of INET, um, we, we only, uh, or we primarily had uh, problems during the initialization of the, of the model. So during when the ex model was, was uh, when we won once came to the point where we could uh, initialize the model and we executed it, it worked quite fine. But um, uh, primarily during the initialization, we, we found uh, the major issues. And uh, there were basically three issues here for the, for the wired protocols. So when you have, uh, yeah, when, when INET does the assignment of MAC addresses. Uh, what it does is it uses one global variable to store the next available address that it can assign. And it just increments this, this variable and, and assigns 
the MAC addresses uh, to the different LPs. And of course this cannot work in, in uh, distributed simulation im anymore because you have, uh, yeah, then you have multiple instances of the same variable and, and then you assign the same MAC addresses to different uh, nodes and that of course can't work. Um, then the next thing, what, what Ethernet does a lot is uh, when, when it, during the initialization, it has to uh, perform some operations and it only can perform these operations if the, there's actually a cable plugged in, or a simulated cable plugged in. So only when it's connected to a different node. And uh, therefore it, it calls uh, the function, uh, function that is called is connected. And this function basically uh, yeah, calls um, then the, the same function on the remote end of the connection and to determine if, if there uh, is actually a link set up. But uh, yeah, of course, when, when this remote end now resides on a different computer, on a different machine, you cannot execute the function over there. And so you end up with wrong uh, determination of, of the connection state. And then the third uh, issue was, pr uh, yeah, that's, uh, was, was uh, yeah, for the IPv4 configurator. So uh, there is this configurator is, is quite a powerful tool. You can yeah, set up, uh, assign IP addresses and all the stuff. So you can set up really complex networks using this. But unfortunately, uh, yeah, you have one configurator and it wants to set up all the all the nodes and and uh, yeah, it has to to know a lot. Uh, it has to know all the topology and to assign the IP, IP addresses to all the nodes. And that's not working if you, uh, yeah, don't have all the nodes on the same on the same uh, machine simulated. So what we developed uh, for, uh, yeah, s initializing the uh, the simulation now in a distributed way, was uh, a concept that that really allows, or the focus of this concept was to allow the. Uh, initialization in the same way as you would do it in the sequential version and of, yeah, as, at, uh, as few effort as possible, as few modifications as possible. So we didn't want to modify the structure of INET completely, but only uh, at the point where it's necessary. And what we developed here was uh, yeah, a concept we call a distributed multi-stage initialization. And when, what you, so it's uh, yeah, a concept that we plugged into the simulator, into Omnet. And uh, when you want to use that from the model side, uh, you can register your classes, your, your simple modules for, uh, yeah, for using this with a macro. And uh, what then happens is that all the instances of these classes are actually initialized one after the other. So we have an example here. We're having two classes, uh, A and B, and we're having three uh, yeah, modules of, of type A and, and two modules of type B. And uh, what, what now happens yeah. is that first of all, uh, A1, uh, module A1 is, uh, is initialized in stage zero. And what this module now should do is it should generate a state object that is serializable so we can transmit it over the network and uh, yeah, this is uh, so. So uh, a one is initialized and returns this state state object to the simulation core, and then the simulation core can transmit this object over the network to the LP that is res responsible for uh, module A two, and module A two then passes this. Uh, uh, or the core on, on this LP then passes this object to uh, module A2, to the initialization function of module A2. And so you, so you can access there all the stuff that A1 put into this object. And this goes on, so uh, this, this module from A2 is, is transmitted to A3. And the same happens uh, for B, so the module, uh, the state generated by B1 is uh, transmitted to B2. And uh, yeah, then when stage zero is completed, we continue with stage one, <coughs> and we're actually getting the same state object again back. 
So the, the object that was generated by A3 in stage 0 is then uh, passed to, to A1 in stage 1 so that we can uh, yeah, use all the information that was put into this object before we can use that in the next stage. So this allows us to basically solve the two, uh, the two first uh, requirements that we had for, uh, for distributed simulation. So the first requirement was uh, global variables. And what you can do is now, yeah, you can just encapsulate these global variables in a sense into that state. So you have a local variable in your initialization function and you write this variable into the state, return the state including this variable to the core so it can transmit this global variable now to the next module and then you modify it, put it back to the state and so the everybody can access this global variable as it would access it in, in a sequential simulation. And similarly, it works for, for uh, yeah, these direct methods calls. And here you can yeah, use the kind of request response paradigm. So what you would do is in one stage, you would uh, enqueue, so you have a list of, of requests to, to call certain functions in this uh, state object. And then you enqueue uh, all, the, all the requests, everybody who wants to call a function on a remote end just enqueues a request to your list and then in the next stage everybody looks if in this list there is a request for himself to execute some function and if so and executes this function locally and enqueues the results to that state so that in the third stage then uh, everybody can, can access the results from the functions uh, it wanted to call. And actually, we, we uh, applied these concepts now in, uh, if, uh, for INET, so that INET can be initialized uh, in the same way as, as, as it was initialized in the sequential uh, simulation. So yeah, we had this issue with MAC address assignment, where we have this global variable to uh, increment uh, or to store the next available MAC address. So what we did is we moved this next available MAC address to the, to the shared state. So uh, every module uh, actually yeah, writes into that state the next available, or the first module writes the next available MAC address to that state. The second module can read it, increment it, and write it back to the state. And so this goes on and, and uh, yeah, in the end we have the same MAC addresses assigned to every module as we had in the sequential simulation. Uh, yeah, then for this uh, connection status, you remember uh, that the Ethernet modules need to determine the connection state uh, of, their, of their interfaces, <coughs> and they did so by uh, calling this isConnected function. And yeah, here we, we used uh, this uh, request response paradigm, so uh, yeah, we can, we, we, every module that needs to determine such a state and queues a request to, to this queue. And then, then in the next stage, uh, the modules can, can execute the isConnected function locally. And uh, in, uh, yeah, then the result is either true or false, and they enqueue this uh, result then to, the, to this uh, state. <coughs> and so we just had to shift the operations that rely on this isConnected function to the to a later stage, so that in that stage we have this information and can actually rely on it. Okay, then we had this IPv4 configura configurator. Um, here we had to, uh, yeah, to do a little bit of of structural uh, changing here because. We have this single configurator, and it would just be a huge overkill if we would let this single configurator configure all the the nodes on on different uh, yeah on different machines. 
So what we said here now, you have to have one uh, instance of an IPv4 configurator on each logical process. So you don't have a single configurator anymore, but you have multiple uh, instances of such a configurator. But still, they have to, to communicate with each other, and they have to know the topology of the model so <coughs> that you don't assign the same IP addresses, uh, the same subnet uh, on one LP and on a, on, on a different LP, because, of course, you have to have different IP addresses in your network. <coughs> and, uh, yeah, so they still have to, to communicate, and they, they yeah, actually have to exchange information here and we also did this by by uh, with by this request response paradigm so we have the queues uh, where every configurator can enqueue the uh, information of the local LP that is required by the other configurators on the on the remote LPs and then they can access it from the from the state and so we again had to shift the uh, yeah, initially the actual assignment of IP addresses to a later uh, stage. And this almost allowed us to execute uh, the, the model in parallel. Uh, there was one yeah, minor issue actually uh, using uh, uh, for assigning the UDP socket IDs. So uh, what is done here is um, that a globally unique number is requested. And actually this works quite fine and there was also a solution for distributed simulation. But the funny thing here is that we had a uh, yeah, 64-bit uh, unsigned integer for the going from 0 to 2 to the, uh, 2 to the power of uh, 63. And actually this is split into ranges for uh, when you when you execute the simulation in parallel. This is split into different ranges. And uh, yeah, the interest, the funny thing here is that now uh, the socket ID needs to be uh, a signed integer. And so you convert this unsigned to a signed. And because you have these ranges, you actually get a negative number by this conversion. And that, of course, uh, then fails because you have a negative socket ID and that actually signals a failure. Uh, so yeah, the simple solution here was just using locally unique numbers because uh, it's not necessary to have uh, different UDP socket IDs on different nodes because you only need them locally to address the socket on that node. Um, then there was one point about random number generation. Um, to, this, to this end, we were able to, to execute the simulation in parallel. But, of course, you're now getting different results because uh, what, you, what you now have is you're having random number generators per uh, LP. So you're not having a single random number generator where all of them can draw random numbers from, but you're having different INGs per LP, and so you're getting different results in sequential and parallel execution. And this might be... Might be sufficient, but might be also not what you want when, for example, when you have a bug in the parallel execution and when you want to debug it sequentially and you don't get the bug because you're having different random numbers. And so what we did here was, was uh, to instantiate one random number on every single module so that you're having uh, yeah, the same behavior in sequential and uh, parallel. And so this actually then allowed us to, to execute the model and also validate it, validate it because we really got the same results for sequential and parallel execution. Uh, yeah, of course, we also had to, to implement some uh, serialization and deserialization functions so that we can <coughs> transform, transfer, for example, IPv4 addresses in a network packet to a different node. Uh, so, but that's just an engineering task that you have probably to do for every model that you want to run in parallel. And in general, that shouldn't be such a big big deal. If you know your data structures, you can uh, you just have to, to add all uh, information to the uh, serialized mm -hmm. object. 
Okay, so finally we uh, yeah did some evaluation. So uh, we did yeah we used some case study. So what we did uh, we took this this uh, from an omnet example. There is this uh, NTT backbone scenario, <coughs> and yeah we wanted to have some some large scale network here. So we took this scenario, and to and and used as, as a backbone. And to every backbone router we now connected. Uh, yeah, such such a network that you can imagine f as a corporate or campus uh, uh, local network, and so yeah, we connected such a network of the central router to to each of of these uh, nodes. So in the end, we had a network with approximately five thousand nodes, <coughs> and uh, then we yeah had some different configurations. So. Uh, yeah, first of all, what we varied was the link delay between these corporate LANs and the backbone. So that's basically where where uh, the look ahead then comes from. So the, the longer the link delay, the more, uh, the greater the parallelization window is. So, uh <coughs> yeah, then we, we also varied the number of LPs that we used. So we, we made one simulation uh, on, a, on a single computing node with 12 uh, physical cores inside, and so we, we yeah, s decomposed the network into 12 LPs, so there were yeah, three to four uh, local networks on, on one LP. And in a different setup, we had uh, six machi uh, five machines from, from, this cl from a cl uh, computing cluster with 12 cores each, and then we had 58 LPs so we had each of these uh, local networks on one LP and we had the backbone on another LP. Um, then we also uh, yeah, looked into different traffic patterns. So in one configuration we had 50% of the traffic just residing in one local network and 50% and going, going through the backbone, going yeah, through the internet in that sense. And uh, in a different setup, we had 90% traffic being local and, and uh, only 10% going through the internet. And then we have here the parallelization speed up for the different configurations. And what we can see is that we actually, uh, yeah, getting, getting a higher speed up uh, when we increase the link delay at least, uh, yeah, up to about 10 microseconds. So that's, that's basically the effect that we would expect. The more link delay we have, the greater is the parallelization window and the more speed up we get. Actually, that's not true uh, beyond that point. And uh, yeah, it, at some point it even, even breaks down. Um, we have not a 100% uh, yeah, fitting explanation here, but we guess that it's due to the, the fact that uh, as this link delay increases, um, the, the routers at the gateway gateways have to queue more packets, and uh, that there are some issues that that uh, when the queues grow, uh, yeah, the simulation gets gets slower here, and uh, yeah, so so we don't gain that more. Uh, yeah, and the interesting thing is here also when we have just one, uh, just just 12 LPs, so just one computing node. We don't see the degradation here. We just see a saturation, and and it stays here, more or less. And we we uh, see this effect uh, much stronger on on the configuration where we have uh, different machines. So it seems to be an issue with MPI and so and 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 with tr transmitting then the the packets from from these large queues uh, to the different uh, to the rem remote LPs. Uh, LP is oh sorry, uh, is a logical process. So what you do uh, for the parallel simulation is you decompose, you take the whole network, yeah. and then you decompose it into different LPs, logical processes, and then every computing node, every every CPU that you have in your in your computer where you, where you want to simulate uh, with, uh, then is is responsible only for a part of the yeah, of the okay, simulation. And 12 um, uh, LPs on a single compute node means this single compute node has one CPU. 
it actually has two six core CPUs. Ah. So it has two, twelve so five, CPU cores. Five, Uh, this, this, these are five computers. Yeah. So you have you're having five computers that are connected with with a high speed interconnect, yeah. and they also having this two. So it's the same node that we had same in the in the, okay. but so but five times. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it's it's yeah it's compared to so a speed up of one is is the same yeah to of of the sequential so it's yeah. so it's it's basically here we are fourteen times faster than than a sequential simulation. <coughs> I think so. Yeah, I'm. I'm That's Yeah, I'm, 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 we, we yeah, use it like Omni. Yeah. I would have expected this as well, but it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's strange uh, in, indeed. Um, it's, uh, yeah. Uh, you mean here? I mean in the, yeah. I don't really think so because because you have you always have to to wait for other LPs. And okay, so whatever you have there, does it degrade down if you go to the right? I haven't looked at that, so. But probably it it does, I guess. I mean, if it's not doing some some spinning or some some nonsense, then it <coughs> must it must go down. Yes, sir. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Because you said it's it's INF with, with queuing or so. If the CPU goes down, it's not INF. My guess is that you already said the solution that uh, if you have very long link delays and very many LPs, then the links basically buffer a lot of packets. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. You have a longer incoming queues in, in, the, in the router and in the edge routers. But that basically, basically increases the messages in the future event set. Which overall slows down the simulation. That yeah, but that that would slow down the whole simulation. It would also slow down the sequential simulation, wouldn't it? It would slow down the, the parallel simulation. I think. It will not not slow down the sequential simulation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we actually were not not able to figure out it really to 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 the bottom uh, where it, where it really comes from. Okay, yeah. Uh, so I already finished with my talk. So uh, yeah, we I, yeah I think I talked about uh, the uh, <coughs> parallelization of the INET model suite. So we looked into uh, the issues here and how we can solve them. And yeah, we were at least able to to run it in parallel without having it crashing and with yielding the same results that uh, yeah the sequential simulation uh, gave us. Um, but still, there are improvements possible, and yeah, I guess this issue uh, should be should be investigated. Uh, why it's it's going uh, down there? Um, yeah, our our implementation actually uh, yeah covered uh, yeah a lot of protocols from from the from the uh, yeah common protocol <coughs> stack. Um, what we did not look into uh, is, for example, IPv6. <coughs> though I think uh, IPv6 shouldn't be that much different from IPv4. Um, <coughs> what's probably more different is uh, wireless LAN. Uh, where we didn't look into um, that's, but that's always uh, wireless LAN is always uh, evil for parallel execution because you usually have very uh, short link delays or even zero link delays when you don't model them. So uh, yeah, partitioning a wireless LAN into different LPs is probably not a good idea anyway. Um, yeah, and. Uh, yeah, we also didn't look into all the protocols like like AODV and and so on, but 
yeah, we wouldn't expect that big different problems here, but still, uh, yeah, we consider this future work and uh, it should be investigated at some point. Uh, yeah, you can also download the code uh, from our mm -hmm. website. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty long URL. Uh, you also could use just the first pass and, and then click through it, uh, but even that is still long. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> okay, thank you. The five five milliseconds only. So, uh, we, we simulated like fifty milliseconds, but the samples are taken uh, in the five milliseconds uh, window. Okay. So, so we did because we have this initial transient phase and we didn't want to have this into the simulation. We, we run it for 50 milliseconds before we started the measurements and then we just measured the time of the last 5 milliseconds. So. Okay, so this is the speed up? No, what, what is this? The speed up of, of that time actually. So of course the initialization takes somewhat longer. But uh, of course, we, we expect that, that it benefits if you, if you have a longer simulation run. If you're only simulating for, for 10 seconds uh, of, of real time, you don't want to have it faster because you can just wait for the 10 seconds. So, so <coughs> let me repeat it to see if, if yeah. I can understand yeah. it correctly. So you simulate for 50 milliseconds, yeah. drop all this uh, information, yeah. and then uh, you simulate five more milliseconds. Yeah. And then from these five more milliseconds, from this only this uh, from 50 to 55 milliseconds, yeah. you took it for one LP, for 12 LP, and for 58 LP. Exactly. But the simulations will be different. Do you have the no. same number of packets? No, the simulations are exactly the same. That's what we ensured by, by having the same random number generators and the same seats okay. on the and on the. Okay, good, and uh, so that uh, perfectly reproducible, which is uh, a very difficult task because. Even if two events are placed at the same time, but they are processed in a different order, there is no guarantee of reproducibility. That might be the case. Yeah, that's that's. And that's very you difficult. cannot we okay. guarantee that in distributed simulation. That's right. That but it's pretty unlikely that happens. Okay. That's, and uh, so assuming uh, that you have the same number of packets, so you have the same number of packets in this 50 to 55 uh, milliseconds. Yeah. And then. How many packets were simulated in this 50 to 55 uh, milliseconds of time? Uh, I don't know. Do you know that number? In total. Sorry. How much was each packet and what was the speed of the link? Uh, um, I think we, we had uh, yeah we had different speed of the links. I think we had uh, 100 gigabit per second here. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we had, I think, 10 here, 10 gigabit, and 1 gigabit here, uh, like that. And then we had, uh, yeah, the links, ex uh, uh, about 20% or 30% uh, usage of the links. Okay. So it should be a lot of, lot, a lot of packets that were, were actually being simulated there. Okay. And uh, another question or, or, or would you have benefited if uh, Omnest provided uh, uh, not only a simple module, but a simple module per LP. A simple module per LP? Yeah, uh, so one kind of module yeah. that gets instantiated uh, only once per LP for this IPv4 configuration. That would be good for the IPv4 configurator, right? Because now we had to, to set up the number of IPv4 configura configurators depending on the number of LPs that we have, right? Exactly. And um, if you had one configurator, if you could to say I want to have one configurator per LP, that would be better, I guess, yeah. Because we also run this problem when we do parallel simulation, for instance, to collect the statistics. We, we have one statistics module, normally you want one per LP. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. The same infrastructure and a little bit of this request-based 
uh, API could be incorporated into. Did you do that? Did you organize it like a base class that provides this functionality for LP? No. And then Actually, we didn't have with, with the uh, ini file, so we just said we want to have 12 configurators when we had the partitioning for, for 12 LPs. Okay. So, was, was a simpler way here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> indeed. <laughs>